and welcome. It's the Garden in March. Spring has fully sprung here in the front yard. You can see a lot of the, I believe they're called the African daisies are flowering along with the aloes. We've got some nice orange colors. And the main thing is, last time I did a video, it was January, we'd had a lot of rains and this um, lush weed land is now starting to fade somewhat. Um, but the nasturtiums are still going pretty strong, almost to the point of um, running a bit wild. So you can see some of them are starting to fade um, since it's been pretty dry. And this part of the yard, it's interesting. I have some irrigation going, um, but it doesn't always go over to here. So you can see where these nasturtiums are starting to fade. So one of my projects today is to start clearing those off. And, um, oh, look at that. It looks like a rock. I believe that's some sort of fungus. Cool. <laughs> Maybe that's a good sign of uh, soil health. Uh, as you can see, we still have not got any rocks for my dry riverbed that I keep talking about. But we do have some updates as far as that goes. In the parkway, I finally planted the wildflower seeds and some of them are coming through. Um, some things like, this is a lupin, I believe. It's been completely nibbled up, but the California poppies are there, so I'm pretty excited about that. Um, it's not as fully covered as I had hoped, and it's interesting. I used a different brand of seeds for a different part of the parkway. I'll show you. We move along here. And this, which I have not really watered at all, is like fully covered in seeds. Probably a bit too much. Um, so it looks pretty terrible right now, but hopefully in a month or two, they will be wildflowers. Moving back up along here, I'm not sure I usually give a very good um, context for the garden. So here we are, there's the other parkway where some wildflower seeds were put in. That hillside is just um, completely taken over by wood sorrel, but you know, they're flowering. They look pretty. Um, moving this way, so here's another contextual look of the garden. We're taking on our path. Again, DG path not put in, um, but everything is looking pretty lush and um, some of my succulents are starting to fill in here. This rock purslane that I had put in last summer is really taking over, almost to the point where I wonder, is it too big of a plant for there? But I think it looks really pretty. And it is about to flower some beautiful magenta flowers. Again, the aloes are looking great. Um, I think having put a little bit more irrigation pipe here for these Senecio blue chocsics are making them come in really nicely and the I called it Queen of Madeira in my last video it's actually Pride of Madeira this is a volunteer it's really starting to take over um, I am not the hugest fan of these plants they're very itchy but the bees love them so you can see it's got a lot of flowers that are about to come in so I'm gonna leave it for now and then I think eventually we will I'll cut it back um, to be more manageable but I'm gonna let the flowers come in might as well it's pretty architectural it's a big spot of the garden and um, it makes the garden look pretty filled in. But it is not this sort of succulent look that I had envisioned for it. And speaking of succulent looks, you'll see the nasturtiums have completely taken over. Um, but in a way, I'm okay with that. It's almost like a cover crop. It's kind of leaving the soil to be a little bit shaded, which some of these baby plants, even though they're maybe not getting enough sunlight, um, it's kind of protecting them a little bit from some of these hot waves that we do tend to have. Um, so I'm going to go back down the path here. And so a lot of this stuff, um, you will notice we're starting to get some more rocks. I'll have a story about that. I'll tell you later. Um, but things are starting to kind of come together in my mind. I'm going to reset some of these, move things. Um, now that we, I have a little bit more of an idea of what I want to do with the garden. Um, but right now everything is flowering. It looks really filled in, which makes me really happy. 
And here are some more of those aloes. They're starting to bloom and they are really big. And these Aeonium kiwis, they looked terrible about six months ago and obviously it just takes a little bit of rain for them to just kind of find their way. Um, obviously the more rainbow colored ones are nice. I think these were taken from two different um, neighbors that had stuff in the yard and so I think there's two different varieties. You can see the ones with the pink edges and then the ones that are fully green so that's why that looks like that but it still looks pretty nice and of course apologies for the traffic noise. It is a busy street, um, but you can see the nasturtiums are really taking over um, up here and making this uh, look a little bit like an overrun garden, but it is kind of pretty. There's a little lizard friend hiding there. It looks like uh, he lost a tail. Don't worry, buddy. Um, so yeah, moving along, my path is getting completely overrun with weeds but um, I think that's one of the jobs I'm gonna take over today. And everything here, I think these are fading because it does look like we have some gopher issues up here. And I love these basket flowers, so I might need to give them a really good soak and make sure um, the gophers aren't completely destroying them. Um, again, I'm kind of leaving this to be a little bit wild for now, I don't have major plans for this area. It might make it a kind of a fun secret garden eventually, but for now I'm going to focus more on this area and my project today is so I'm going to start clearing out some of these nasturtiums that are looking a bit more faded and start to plan what I'm going to do here in this part of the yard. And one of the things I alluded to earlier that's a little bit exciting is uh, you'll see we have a lot of rocks. And um, this was a Facebook Marketplace find. Someone had all these rocks in their yard. They wanted to get rid of them. So uh, with just a bit of manpower, we went and we dug them out of their garden. It just took a bit of strength uh, and uh, sweat labor, as they call it, sweat equity. Um, and we got a bunch of rocks. So a lot have been moved to other parts of the yard that we needed them, but these are all here to eventually now, we are finally going to make this border, um, some of this Santa Barbara cobble as it's called and not these cement parts. So another project I have to do here is clear out all this leaf litter. I'm gonna come in with the little blower and start to um, clean it up and hopefully the yard will start to fill in and be prepared for summer. Um, I've got some more tree aloe. I got I found a few more pieces that a neighbor had left out um, and I started putting them in there. And again, I think once I start moving out this nasturtium, I will see, uh, looks like we have a lot of gopher problems that we need to take care of. We've got a lot of pocket gophers. There's their pockets, so-called pockets. And I'm gonna clear those out and see what I can do about that. Turning around to this side of the garden, which is a little bit more shaded. And I have a few more things to um, plant in, but this is what I'm kind of call my crassula corner. I have some crassulas to fill in there. I've started planting a bunch up there and they are starting to fill in and they look really nice with these aeoniums. These aeoniums are looking pretty good because they are kind of in dappled sunshine and they have irrigation so they're not starting to go dormant just yet. Um, again I have a rock purslane here but I think it's going to get too big. I might move it to a different spot of the yard because that might sort of overtake this whole area. Um, this ice plant is really filling in, and here is my little succulent tapestry. You can see some of it's looking a little faded, but I've started adding a bit more to it, which is yet to fill in. Give it a couple months, and I think it'll start to look good. And then we put some uh, little friends in here. I do like the idea of having little, we get a lot of neighborhood walkers down this way. And I do like the idea of um, making little surprises in the yard for people to enjoy. There's some more Aeonium kiwis that 
just looked absolutely terrible about six months ago and just obviously takes a couple good rain sessions and then they start to literally find their roots and start to look good. Got some aloes that aren't looking so good. So a lot of this, what I usually do is because most of my plants I get for free, um, they're either propagated or taken as pups. So like these aloes, they look pretty bad, but when they finally start to grow, they will get nice and big. Um, and yeah, again, here's the little crassula corner that is starting to um, come to life. You know, some of them look a little bit rough, but they will start to grow. As you can see, there's some growth going on there. And hopefully they'll grow a little bit tall, a bit like that one. They're the same kind of jade plants. And, uh, they will kind of fill in and we have this whole other spot to f think about but haven't done so yet. It's at the moment just a place to dump these um, old logs that we found in other parts of the yard. Um, no big change here on the rock wall. Um, I am planning on finally, almost a year later, planting up this um, cactus. I think I'm gonna take this agave out and put the cactus in. And I'm gonna move a few things as well. Just make a few changes. So this sticks on fire. It doesn't get enough sunshine, so it's looking green and not as epic as it could be. So I'm gonna move that to a more sunny part of the garden. And I think I'll move that other agave, um, attenuata that was over there, to there. So just swap things around over here. These guys are looking okay. This could do with some cleaning up and some of these aeoniums were, they're more or less happy. There is irrigation here, but it doesn't, I don't know. I think this soil is just very dry. So they go in phases of looking good and not so good. And then up here um, in our little shady yard, these are plants that were at the very front of the house, which um, when we updated the front of the house, I moved them and they were sitting in nursery pots at the side and I finally took the time to put them in the soil and I think they are gonna be pretty happy here because this is real filtered shady sunlight which is what these kind of guys like. And then these are kind of irises that were again in another part of the yard and not what we wanted, but they are starting to take and they probably do want more direct sunshine but they seem to be taking it okay. Now back here, the lantanas are starting to fill in. Um, everything here is in its spring way. So these agaves, I believe they're called blue flame, um, a neighbor was getting rid of them. They were overgrown in the parkway at their house. So I um, happily took them off their hands. And I think they're gonna go on either side of the driveway at the front. Um, and just have to prepare the space because again, gophers do like agaves. So I wanna make sure we kind of put some gopher wire down. Um, and then over here, you'll see my other half, my husband has been, this is, has been his project, um, updating this hill. He really cut back this uh, Pride of Madeira plant, um, almost to the point where I was like, whoa, um, but it's good, it means a lot more sunshine. Um, nothing has set in yet, but just really um, showing off these lovely boulders that were just here and moving into the native California hillside. Um, it's gonna make everything, I think, be really happy and sunny there. Um, I think I mentioned in my last video, all the plants chosen here, not all of them are native, such as this rock rose, um, that was a, something I didn't realize, but I did choose everything here to be super drought tolerant, but also good for holding in the hillside. This is like really not great clay soil. Um, everything, if it rained, the soil would just move down. This was just a weed ridden, terrible place. And now it's becoming my lovely pollinator garden. So we've finally got in all the um, Ceanothus Yankee Point, that will eventually bush out and even move over the um, wall. You can see all the rocks, this again going back to our marketplace finds, that's where they were from. 
Um, we've got some salvias, some yarrow. Um, I had some awful trouble with my manzanita, um, Howard McMinn. I just got a little baby one, which hopefully will be much happier there. Um, and yeah, again, more salvias, a little bit more rock rose. Oh my God, I was filming this video and this plant started moving. And look at this. This is what I'm talking about. These gophers are so problematic. Um, so I will have to deal with that. Um, I, as you can see, these have gopher baskets around them, but they do like to nibble the leaves. And then part of the reason this manzanita had done, the manzanita that was there before had done so badly is the gophers don't eat it, but they had created holes all around it. So I am definitely gonna take care of that. Um, as, I, as I started to say, um, these pelargonium, uh, they are kind of rose-scented pelargonium. Smell amazing, little delicate flowers. They had come from, there was a parkway near our house and um, they were just cutting back the hedge and I took the little branches and sure enough, they grew and look how big they are. From, this was from little, two little clippings. And then this other pelargonium, which was already there, the color is just amazing. I'm really happy with that. I think, I can't remember had I put these little succulents in here, probably filled it up a little bit too much, but you know, um, we'll see. We've got some ice plant that is yet to bloom there. I'm not usually a big ice plant fan, but the colors of their blooms are so nice. So we'll see how they fit in. And then as you can see, just the usual millions of projects happening. So that's a pretty decent update, I feel like, for now. I am so bad about posting things that it's March now, but it might, God knows, it'll probably be summertime before I actually post this video. That's what's going on in March. Um, I'm enjoying kind of doing these updates because it's really great to look back and see how far we've come, and then also to see what works best in the garden and um, how it's evolving, and hopefully it'll help you get some ideas as well um, as far as in the garden or if you're just um, living vicariously and curious about California gardening. Thanks so much for joining me and uh, yeah I'd love to hear from you. love to hear you in the comments. I'm on TikTok and Instagram uh, more often especially there talking about um, my tips for getting free or cheap plants um, or propagating. Um, so yeah thanks so much for joining. See you later. I'm